Thank you, Madam Chair. Honorable Senators, I rise to speak in support of Bill S-222, an act to amend the Income Tax Act use of resources. I'm honored to be speaking to you today from Mi'kmaq, the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Honorable colleagues, Bill S-222 is an important bill affecting Canada's charitable sector. That sector employs approximately 2 million Canadians and represents 135 billion or 8.1% of GDP. Our international cooperation sector alone includes over 1,200 charities and employs 14,000 Canadians and spends more than $5 billion annually. Senator Omidvar, the sponsor of Bill S-222, explained that this bill amends the language of the Income Tax Act, which currently limits registered charities to spending their charitable dollars on their own activities or those of other registered Canadian charities. With the hope for passing of this bill and the development by the Canadian Revenue Agency of the related regulations, Canadian charities would be able to expand and adjust their funding relationships with non Nonprofits, international partner organizations, social enterprises, indigenous organizations, and others, as long as the funding was directed at a recognized charitable cause. To be clear, with this change, the what funds are spent on would remain the same. Funds would be spent on charitable purposes, but the how and through whom would be broadened, thus emancipating resources for their intended purposes and transforming forming for the better relationships among partner organizations. In their February 19th article, making it easier to do good, doing away with their own activities requirement, a group of 37 lawyers who regularly work with Canadian registered charities commented, the current rules are inefficient, overly complex and out of touch with those of other global actors. They create lost opportunities by making it difficult, in some ways prohibitively so, to carry out legitimate charitable work. Further, they impede collaborative partnerships between Canadian charities and their ally organizations around the world." End of quote. Senator Omidvar's solution, as de detailed in Bill S-222, is to move away from the current language in the Income Tax Act of own activities and its related and required direction and control by the Canadian charity over a donee to a new language of resource accountability. The amendments to the Act proposed by this new bill replace the reference to charitable activities carried out by itself throughout the Act with the words charitable activities. It amends one section of the Act to expand the definition of charitable activities to allow charities to use their resources for charitable purposes by taking reasonable steps, and it inserts a section outlining what reasonable steps means. The Income Tax Act does not define the terms charitable activities or charitable purposes. The, Canadian Re the Canada Revenue Agency relies on the common law definition which describes a charity as an organization established for any of the following four purposes, the relief of poverty, the advancement of education, the advancement of religion, and other purposes beneficial to the community in a way the law regards as charitable. So as many as you know, my colleagues, my life before joining you in the Senate involved decades of work in the nonprofit and charitable sectors, both locally and internationally. From 41 years ago, working as a CUSO cooperant on rural industries in Botswana, to becoming a rural development advisor in Indonesia through the University of Guelph, to running Calmetto, a Canadian NGO, working in microfinance in Canada and internationally, to leading the Cody International Institute at St. Francis Xavier University, supporting Stephen Lewis with the early years of his foundation and Romeo Dallaire with his Child Soldiers Initiative, and more recently working with Haitian leaders to establish the Haitian Center for Leadership and Excellence. I've seen my fair share of what the international and domestic development community can accomplish through effective partnerships. My intention today is to focus most of my remarks on Bill S how Bill S-222 can improve Canada's role in international cooperation. However, I'd first like to briefly highlight some critical issues regarding the relationship between the charitable sector 
and in the Indigenous community in Canada. Ms. Chris Archie is Executive Director of the Circle of Philanthropy and Aboriginal Peoples in Canada. The Circle is an open network which, promise, which promotes giving, sharing, and philanthropy in order to support the empowerment of First Nations, Inuit, and Métis communities and individuals in building a stronger and healthier future. In a recent presentation, Ms. Archie was critical of the existing charities legislation, which she characterizes as being based on and perpetuating a paternalistic view of Indigenous Canadians. The Income Tax Act not only ties their hands as they look at creative ways of community advancement through philanthropy, but it also causes harm. It further entrenches colonial histories, hinders the establishment of horizontal partnerships initiated by or involving Indigenous communities and groups, imposes overwhelming administrative burdens, and most importantly, causes so many lost opportunities, opportunities that are essential to building self-reliance, prosperity, and well-being. Ms. Archie went on to say that with the current direction and control elements required of charities by the Income Tax Act, there's also significant concern about the appropriation of the intellectual and cultural property rights of Indigenous peoples. There's so much more that could be said on this matter, but I will leave it there for now and recommend that Ms. Archie would be an excellent witness when this bill is being studied by committee. Honourable colleagues, Canada is an important player in the international arena, and it has committed itself to being a strong advocate for sustainable development and achieving the goals of Agenda 2030. In the preamble to transforming our world, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, it's noted that eradicating poverty is not only a, the greatest global challenge facing us, but it is an indispensable requirement for sustainable development. Ending poverty cannot be done by the efforts of governments alone. It requires a network of partners across the globe working together. The commitment to action through partnership has been well enshrined in Canada's foreign policy and international cooperation strategy for many years. Global Affairs Canada describes itself as strongly committed to advancing sustainable development at home and abroad, working with a wide range of diverse partners, Global Affairs Canada is contributing to the elimination of poverty and inequality and building a more peaceful, inclusive, prosperous and resilient world for everyone. Canada is committed to a whole of government, whole of society approach to implementing the 2030 agenda at home and abroad. Further, Canada's feminist international development policy, which seeks to reach the poorest and most vulnerable, particularly through advancing gender equality and the empowerment of all women and girls, is meant to underscore the importance of human dignity, defend the rights of women and girls, and contribute to building local capacity for sustainability. So there we have it. Canada is committed to working with a wide range of diverse partners, is committed to taking a whole of society approach, wants to build resiliency, and is committed to building local capacity. Our current rules governing the Canadian charitable sector in the Income Tax Act work against these policy commitments. At the May 2016 Humanitarian Summit in Istanbul, Canada signed on to the Grand Bargain, a unique agreement to get more means into the hands of people in need and to improve the effectiveness and efficiency of humanitarian action. Included in the commitments of the Grand Bargain are more support and funding tools for local and national responders and an effort to ensure the people receiving aid participate in making the decisions which affect their lives. In order to achieve the overall purpose of the Grand Bargain, and now with the COVID pandemic causing increased global devastation, Canadian humanitarian organizations and their partners urgently need this simple change to our Income Tax Act. As Senator Omidvar explained, the wording in the Canadian Income Tax Act and related administrative policy guidelines require charities working with other types of organizations abroad to impose direction and control over them. 
the current Income Tax Act requires that all resources of what it defines as a charitable organization, a organization be devoted to charitable activities carried on by the organization. It also further clarifies that its status as a registered charity could be in jeopardy if it makes a gift to a non-qualified donee. What this means in practice is that local organizations abroad must essentially surrender control to the Canadian charity they are partnering with if they wish to receive part, uh, funding. As is the case with Indigenous partnerships, this paternalistic and colonial approach permeates and taints our charitable work abroad. Bill S-222 responds to the Senate Special Committee on the Charitable Sector recommendation that the Government of Canada direct the Canadian Revenue Agency to revise guidance CG-002, Canadian Registered Charities Carrying Out Activities Outside Canada. The current wording of the Income Tax Act goes against the important concept of local ownership, which is highlighted by Cooperation Canada is central to any effective development approach. Kevin Perkins, the Executive Director of Farm Radio International, put it this way in his testimony. Our ultimate success depends on helping local development partners to become more effective and sustainable. If these organizations function only as intermediaries, their critical role in effective development may be diminished, which could undermine the long-term goal of self-reliance. Canadian organizations are trying to contribute to making the world a better place, but they're challenged by a regulatory framework at odds with best practices. Honourable colleagues, I understand this frustration and frankly, the embarrassment from my own experience over the years. After the devastating 2010 earthquake in Haiti, the world rushed in to help with the immediate humanitarian emergency and then the critical effort to build back better so Haiti would be stronger and more resilient in the future. And as Haitian colleagues would say, no longer be a graveyard for well-intentioned, expensive, but unsustainable dependency-creating efforts. Haitian organizations themselves are best placed to reach local communities and respond to local needs and opportunities. If they need to depend on a Canadian intermediary, it takes more resources, runs the risk of not scratching where it itches, and takes away from the development of local institutional capacity. As Alana Landsberg Lewis, co-founder of the Stephen Lewis Foundation, has noted, the Income Tax Act provisions carry unmistakable whiff of colonial imperialism and are a truly regrettable holdover of an old model of international development that Canada should have by now completely outgrown. The 21st century is about development cooperation, not development command and control. Colleagues, the international development community has known better for a long time. Now is the time to adapt. Bill S-222 will make that critical adaptation possible. This welcome change will result in Canadian charities sharing power instead of holding power over their international partners. It will foster and support local ownership and increase capacity for achieving more and better results. It will reduce the administrative burdens and ensure more funds are used to achieve the charitable purposes. It will improve accountability. It will increase Canadian charities' ability to more swiftly pool funds with others when responding to emergencies. It will reduce dependency and help establish partners partnership based on trust, mutual respect, and equality. Colleagues, most importantly, it will re re result in less poverty, less, or sorry, better health and education, greater economic opportunities, less economic disparity, stronger democracies, improved gender equity, less violence, and a healthy planet for all. Colleagues, who could argue with that? Honorable senators, please join me in support in supporting Bill S-222, and let's send it to committee as soon as possible for further study. Thank you. Merci. Willalio.